Testing one, two. Okay, everybody can hear me. Good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully you guys are doing okay. Well, we have a discussion. Guys, I'll tell you something. I just told people on Channel Zero. I want you guys to be aware that uh, I am extremely uncomfortable right now. In the, in the upper extremes. So please don't do the oohs and the ahs. Don't do that. Don't do that. The Lord knows what he's doing. It's not COVID. Matter of fact, it's not COVID. For some reason, I haven't caught COVID, despite who I've been around. But it does carry a high fever. This some fracturing of some bones. So, there we are. So far, I uh, tend to be, uh, I won't go too far. Won't go too far, but everything will be fine. Anyway, we're going to have this conversation today. I'm going to start out by saying, some of you guys who have been just as uh, frugal as I am, China has actively launched a cyber sniffing operation. And they're trying to destroy the infrastructure from the inside. This time, it's happening through any old network equipment that you may have. ISPs are advising everybody that if your device is 10 to 15 years old, to either get rid of it and, or get a pad. ISPs will have no choice but to uh, not allow certain devices on their network. This is what China is doing. And China is doing this through operatives in the USA. Okay? So they are actively doing this. Now, that will ultimately cause some infrastructure if issues like water, sewage, treatment plants, potentially power plants, so on and so forth. You guys can do the USA a big favor by making sure your equipment is up to par. Right? Make sure you have all patches, all updates, because if not, uh, China's do doing their best to get us from the inside. And because this is a active hunt, it's a very active hunt. They're not going to stop. They won't. They have AI-driven vocations that are doing far more than any hacker can do. Uh, these, these software packages are exploiting everything. All right. So, for example, Netgear, some of the old Netgear devices, some of the old Cisco devices, they are not very good devices. They're not very good devices at all. Somebody says, what's a patch? A patch is an update. Right? A patch is a update in the firmware and software that allows your modem to close any ports, doorways, if you will, that uh, don't have to be used to shut down anything that uh, any nefarious organization may exploit to get to the U.S. Their goal is to use you to tear down the infrastructure of the U.S.A. It's not a new concept. It's just that the methods are very new, right? It's very efficient, very fast. And you guys have to be on your P's and Q's. Think of it this way, too. If you, uh, somebody said also use them. Well, yeah, VPNs are fine, but they're, they could care less about VPNs. AI can go right around VPN. So, well, we knew that was coming. That's right. We knew it was coming. For those of you who have, have virtual private networks, AI is smart enough to match you with your physical location, right? This is AI. So I mean, it, there's a battle in the cyber realm to protect uh, people from crafty people. But in this case, they had, uh, not people, but AI, artificial intelligence, that has developed ways to get beyond every safeguard you can imagine. The only thing they can't get beyond is where there is no software and something is hardwired, right? So that's why you want your patches in your system. That's why you want to make sure you have all updates, right? You want to make sure that in, in the computer world, if you shut down a connection to something, right, there is still a physical wire connected to, you know, both sides, right? A hardwire disconnect is when that wire is interrupted, separated, it doesn't matter what tool anybody is using. Nothing's going to make that wire work, right? And so essentially, they're doing this with some of the new routers that are coming out. 
it's going to cost USA a lot of money, companies a lot of money to develop this, but uh, it is encourageable. They are holding people ransom. You know, if they find that your system is near some military base and they can use you to get to the military base, they will often have your system held hostage right, with all your files and everything else. So, yes, we have reached that day. And it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Which is why the topics of biometrics is so um, expansive. It's everywhere. Everybody is talking about biometrics. And I believe that people will request it, right? If the populace begins, if they start losing their own precious memories, they start losing their devices, right? Their window to the world, uh, they will ask for greater security. They will. They will. So expect hearings um, that are coming from security breaches. Expect something to be appointed over all these uh, gaps in our technology. Expect that. Hmm? Expect that. Somebody says, yeah, what's a patch? A patch is simply, think of it as a update to your system, right? You get a system. Um, say you haven't updated your system in two years. And there's a security vulnerability in your system. A patch is somebody who went back and updated the, both the firmware and the software utilized in your device to cause it not to be vulnerable. Right? So they call that a patch. That's all. That's all. So it's an update, essentially. A patch is an actual software uh, package that is an update. That's all you have to remember. No big deal. Big deal. No big deal. So having said that, unfortunately, they said about 30% of computer networks are compromised already. That's not a good number, right? Uh, that really isn't a good number, especially since it takes only one system uh, to tear down everything else. There is really an active campaign to cause people to go against each other, for people to get uh, to be out of their minds. Right? Because if you lose your personal data, you're not going to be a happy person. You won't be. If you find out that your computer is held for ransom, ransomware somehow crept in on your computer and you can access your social media accounts, your pictures, photos, and all that good stuff, you're not going to be very happy. You know? And in this case, they don't want money. They don't. They want you to agree to give them access. They want you to agree to allow a piece of software to run on your computer. So essentially, they have you become a traitor, right? By holding your stuff ransom. That's all. In other words, you can't pay your way out of this one. You can't. And it's unfortunate because uh, a lot of people don't care about this country. They don't. They don't care about it. And it's becoming painfully obvious in quite a few areas. So that's the first thing. So remember that one. Guys, let me get this other stream. And I also had to get some water. Right? I had to get some water. I'll be right back. I forgot to get the water. I did. Boy, this one. You know, it's funny. If you guys hear me laughing, here's why. This may sound strange, but when I have a fever and your whole body aches and it feels like your clothes weigh a thousand pounds a piece, that pain that you feel, right, gives me the giggles. It does. So I'm trying to stay real still talking to you guys so I don't get the giggles. I will be, you know, that's just me. So I don't want that to happen. And it's, uh, yeah, so I'm trying for that not to happen. But if it does, you have an understanding of what's taking place. And don't, uh, again, please don't lose an eye. Don't do that. When, when somebody is sick, right, if you're one of those negative people that, that, that don't, uh, you know, that we don't need that. If you do have something to say, have something to say on the healing side. A confirmation of what's already gone wrong. I already know that. I already know that. It, it probably won't stay long. But that happened. that happened. Somebody said, how high is the fever? It's fluctuating. It's fluctuating. Pretty high. Let's put it this way. My resting heart rate is a 117. It's pretty high, isn't it? 117 beats per minute resting heart rate. My normal resting heart rate is in the 40s. So, anyway, that's the human body. Number two. 
Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know why? Because I'm a believer. This is not my first rodeo. I'll be back in a few minutes right here. At the OT, we have a lot to cover. We do. I'll hold this. I'll be right back in just a few minutes. Okay, everybody, I'm back again. Let me see if I can this point. Hopefully, it's okay for everybody. I do not want to blow up the system there. Everybody, you have good volume. Is that good volume for you guys? Hopefully, it is. Oh, just in case you guys don't know. How many of you think that without adversity, your life will be so much better? How many? How many think that? If you never had trouble, opposition or anything else, your life will be that much better. I'm going to tell you guys something real quick. Whenever strange things happen in your life, right? The Lord knows that when nothing happens in your life, that's when you start becoming bored, too complacent, right? When a person becomes complacent, they begin to complain. They do. Internally, they're no longer satisfied. When you go through some sort of opposition, right, you begin to look over, reevaluate things, prioritize things, by the way, which you cannot do unless you face adversity. You cannot correctly prioritize anything until you go through some, right? In my experience, every time it was required of me to prioritize things, something would happen. And in those moments, I would see everything differently. And I do cherish those moments. See, I realize that without adversity, you're blind in a lot of areas. With adversity, you need to reestablish what's important, what's not. Right? What's priority, what's not through adversities. You begin to see the truth of everything around you. You do. And essentially, you begin to reprioritize everything. And the Lord does this for me every time it's needed. Every time it's needed. Because I don't get sick. I just don't get sick. I have injuries, yes. Sin. Don't. So for me to even be in this predicament is quite revealing. It is. That means opposition is coming. That means priorities must be put in place. And I, for one, am think That's why I don't like people feeling Sorry. You know how people feel sorry for another person? But forget that. You wouldn't go through anything unless the Lord allows you to go through something, correct? Isn't that correct? You wouldn't be able to conduct anything unless the Lord empowers you to conduct something. We've well, got to finally get this. We have to get that. So that we stop thinking about coincidences and things of that nature. I'm telling you, your life would be far richer, much more accurate. If, you could, if people could just understand that everything that transpires in your life is your father's doings, he will allow or disallow. Nothing accidentally happens to any believer. It doesn't work that way. No, it's purposed. And it's important that we find out that purpose by his word, not by theory, not by speculation, by his word. Isn't that right? That's why he said, don't think it's strange when you go through fiery trials. Don't. He enriches our lives. A lot of people, they don't like his methods. I do. Because I see what they develop within all of us. They are truly ingenious. And they never, they never falter. Never. Remember, remember that. That's why I have no time for sadness. I really don't. No time for that. Anyway. Let's continue with this. So China is doing their thing, right? They really are trying to get us going. In fact, this election year is going to bring out every foul bird, every foul creature you can think of. It is. Every nation wants to maximize off this election. But, guys, you got to watch what you believe. You got to be careful of what you believe. You do not want to be those who believe or who have confidence in some dark figure that you did not know was dark. And how many times, how many times in life did we think somebody was full of light, but it turned out they were full of darkness? How many times? 
All of us have been fools in that degree, right? That way. There are elements or, or things involved, right? They're going to capitalize off the changes that are taking place in the USA and around the world. Things will become distressful for a lot of people, not for you, but for a lot of people. And they're going to, they're going to maximize all that. You really have to get yourselves ready to have an understanding that you can't change a person's mind. You may represent the truth. You can't force someone to accept the truth. Right? Having said that, the border issue, this border problem, you know what they're doing now, guys, don't you, in the border problem? They're taking all the folks, all the folks who were having that uh, get-together down, right? The border patrol is moving everybody from uh, one part where, where, where uh, all these people were to muster. They're taking them from that part to another part of Texas where they won't be uh, seen by the masses. They won't be seen by the masses. Is, but the question I have for everybody is this, because this is, this is going to be one of the points of contention for the entire country. Is it a foul thing to do to shut the borders? Is it terrible to shut the borders? Is it terrible to send people back home again? Is it? The Lord has given us a way, but for the life of us, we can't follow it. We just won't follow it. The Lord desired of us, right, in every decision that we make. He wanted us to be inclusive. You know, everybody's two cents, so to speak, being thought about, that they can come to a consensus. The problem is, people in this day and age, they're disconnected from what cruelty is. They don't know what cruelty is. A lot of folks will say, well, you know, if you turn those uh, migrants back and they have a lot of situations, that's just wrong, right? That's wrong. But still, the other folks, they just don't want, oh, well, let's go ahead and face it. Some people don't want anybody in this nation, and some people just go along with what's happening but for the most part. The people who have dealt with consequences of very bad people that have come across the border, they see those who immigrate as, as a type of person. But is it cruel to shut the borders? Is that a cruelty? It is in the respect if you do it of some sort of prejudice, race, something like that. In my opinion, it's cruel. It's cruel. It is very cruel to have someone think that they can enter into your country to travel all that way, to give up everything they had, any type of stability they had, only to reach the border to be turned away. It's cruel. See, wouldn't it be better if somebody gave out a message and said, nobody's coming to the border and say, nobody. That way people would not falsely have, a, have this false dream of coming to the USA. If somebody would just, on the news, with a microphone, something, and say, hey, don't come to the USA border, because you won't get in. If people knew that up front, they would come up with alternatives, right? But that's not what they're saying. The message is confused. In every case, it is confused. And the people, some people are told they can get into the country, Right. And that's a false promise. What cruelty is it? I mean, it's very cruel to have an entire family leave the, the, the security of where they are to go to an unknown place only to be turned around. And where are they going to go back to? Because they spend all their money to get there, which means they have nothing. They have nothing. That's cruel. That's cruel. You know, when the Bible says that the, the Lord teaches us let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything in between is from the evil one. Do you guys know that? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything in between is from the evil one. And the reason for that is when you're not absolute about things, you can give false hopes. You can give false promises. When you sit there and say, well, you know, possibly, maybe, there could be, that, that's a, that will bait a person. And in their minds, they can develop whatever they want to. 
only to be turned around when they get there. That's cruel. That's very cruel. So it is cruel for these politicians not to have a clear message every single day. Because if you don't, if you've never heard them say that, there have those immigrants who desire to come up to the USA. Hmm? That's, that's terrible, isn't it? It's terrible. And see, for me, it's heartbreaking for me. Can you imagine taking your family to, you're, you're going to a country, you, you've got all these dreams and everything else because someone told you that, hey, you, you, you can get in there. Don't worry about what anybody says. You can start a new life for your family. Then when you get there, the answer is no. Can you imagine how heartbreaking that would be? That's a hardship. People die when they're told they can't enter because someone who was evil straight up to tell them, chances are you cannot him. If you can go on any news, any, any news outlet, and you will not hear a clear answer, you will not. And that's very sad. In my opinion, all of them should stand up and make a very clear statement that if you come to this border, you will not get in. And let the people know that you're going to be stuck in the border potentially for years before you're even processed. And stop giving people false promises. That's one gripe I have about Democrats. It is. I have a gripe with the Democrats about that because they will not tell people forward, you know, just, just openly that, hey, you can't come into the border like that. And you put your family under great risk if you do that. They will not for the life of them say no. And what was the principle from the Lord? Yeah, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything in between is from the evil one. My gripe with the Democrats in that specific context is that they will not say yes or no. They won't. They keep saying maybe. That's what they keep saying. Maybe. They won't say yes or no. And in my opinion, they should say no. Absolutely not. That's why we have a crisis at the border. And that small, inconcise thing is causing a breakdown within the USA. Isn't that terrible? So essentially, they have allowed, uh, uh, because they are not concise in what they're saying, they have allowed greater divisions within the USA. And it ultimately costs lives. It costs lives. That's why I, don't, I do not lean to stories about the border, you know, with the drugs and stuff. More drugs come through other parts than any time at, in Texas. But that's not the issue. The issue is, they keep killing people. Christians, unfortunately, they probably have the right answer to give. They're just not positioned to give that answer. That means you guys are not positioned to tell the world, don't come to the border. You should be positioned. And if anybody's going to speak truth in this nation, it ought to be you. Maybe that's why nobody else can speak truth. Maybe the Lord is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God you, to finally stand up and to speak his truth. God's truth heals, repairs, doesn't it? Man's truth is skeptical at best. Anyway, that's the issue with that. So to continue, so long as they will not give a clear yes or no, right? You're going to have issues at the border. There is no resolving it. There is no resolving it. And to date, it has not been resolved. Because no one will say yay or nay. No one will. Isn't that something? That's a principle. That's a biblical principle. That you have witnessed all your life and it has not failed. Isn't that something? My goodness. Okay, everybody. Now, this is odd. Okay, hold on. Unscheduled break. When I first started talking, I was freezing to pieces, right? I'm about to burning. I'm burning. I'm burning. I am burning. It's so funny. You know what? I see things like this as discouragement. I do. Because we have, uh, we have some issues we have to cover today. I believe we're right at the door of them, too. I believe that a few things are about to take place. I'm really not concerned in who believes it or not. I am concerned about putting it out there. 
so that if in the event it does take place, you'll at least know that your Father in Heaven, He already knows about the issue. That will give you a great, uh, greater comfort than most. But if you don't know what your Father's doing and something takes place, and you didn't know it was from Him, that's when you begin to question things. That puts you in a vulnerable state. If you knew that in your life every bad happening was indeed the Lord's design, you wouldn't have a problem with those bad happenings. You would seek knowledge and wisdom for those bad happenings. But when nobody tells you that your life is preordained, when you really do believe that things are happenstance, then you also believe that your life is at risk every single day, don't you? See, if you, if you thought that there was no divine order to your life, your life is going to be by chance. Uh, you can't have great security in life if you think it's by chance. That means you're going to be paranoid. You're going to have schizophrenia of the worst type. You're going to think everybody's out to get you. You're going to have no stability. And that will spread from person to person. That's what Satan would just love that. The border issue. You guys knew that was coming. You did. In COT, that was coming. You did. Now, now, I'm not bragging by any means. I'm just telling you that somehow the Lord allows this place to know things. So it's of no big surprise when it takes place. It is of no big surprise. And we should be able to stand even, stand pretty firm on the Word of God with every happening, right? With every happening. You think 2024 is not going to be the most impactful year of just about every single year people have been living it? Hmm? Somebody said, Mike, the Houthis say they will cut communication wires underwater. They can, and they will try. They're not whistling Dixie. You know that, right? They're not whistling. Do, do you guys understand that uh, in our armed services, we have people who were born here in the USA. Hear me on this. Who have a, who have developed, I'll say developed, a uh, strong convictions towards Islam. Now, think of a Caucasian person who was born in America, who has Caucasian parents, and their parents before them are Caucasian, who has roots in the, you know, the, the founders. But then this Caucasian sailor bends or bows to Islam. Let's say these, let's say you have two American pilots, two American Caucasian pilots, Caucasian, who in their heart of hearts, they worship Allah. In their heart of hearts, they embrace everything of Islam. In their heart of hearts, they'll do anything to support Islam. Now, we're not talking about Middle Eastern people. We're not talking about people with roots in the Middle East. Nope, we're talking about Caucasians with family genes only from America, right? This is the situation we're facing. And so you have people over here who are trained in, in very um, guild areas who then at some point take that training and begin to train others in the Middle East and others besides them. They recruit people into Islam. Do you not know that you can't tell who's loyal to Islam by skin color anymore? You can't tell them. can do. So for a person's paradigm, this is, well, there are no Middle Eastern people here. That makes this okay. No, it isn't. Because now you're having uh, people over here of all different colors who are loyal to Islam. They are not loyal to anything else but Islam, and they support the Middle East. And they do not support Israel. They support actions against Israel. And they're over here. These people are officers, Delta operatives, right? They're people in high positions. Very difficult to vent someone's faith, isn't it? It's very difficult. So something is, uh, we're in a very different position here in the USA. It used to be. You could identify people uh, pretty much by their, you know, based on their loyalties, by how they look. Can't do that anymore. You cannot do that anymore. And it's becoming quite dangerous. Very dangerous. 
that means you're going to have people, especially with the elections, you're going to have people who hate America. With the Democrats, you're going to have people who hate America with the Republicans. They're going to do everything they can to make you fight amongst yourselves, to declare their curses. And it's coming. It's coming. So now skin color doesn't tell anything. It doesn't. And it's, uh, you know, identification is very difficult these days. Very difficult. One person, they know for a fact, are trained about, it's about 400 different uh, officers. Officers, not enlisted officers. Officers of policy centers. So think about that. Who gets a hold of U.S. military officers and totally changes, you know, sit there and change what they believe in to the point where they begin to be very charismatic and, and, and blood hall embracing of Islam here in the USA. And they continue to work in high, you know, high areas because nobody knows. Nobody knows. We, we are in very different times. They are not like they used to be. And those different times are going to come to a head. In 2024, big plans are in store for 2024. That they are. So we went over China. When I come back, we have to talk about that. I hate trees in these conversations. I don't like trees in these conversations. But we're going to come back. I need to share with you guys something else. Something I don't want you to overlook. I'll be right back in a few minutes right here at COT. All right, everybody, I'm back again. It is Saturday. You know, well, I, I did think uh, somebody out there, I was reading your comments before I started up, and I was like, wait a minute, is today Sunday? I believe yesterday was somewhat of a blur. It was. It was, but I'm so thankful. So thankful. I'll give you guys a, uh, uh, give you guys a piece of advice. When you have something to do for righteousness sake, right? Let nothing get in your way. That's up to you. you. You can give in to your conditions. You can make an excuse not to go forward with what you're given. Or you can press through. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something I know that nobody can take away from me. When you press through all conditions, well, that's when your father heals. That's when he does the impossible. Right? He really does. That's when he does the absolute impossible. He'll do it every single time. When you continue to press, he'll do it every single time. I strongly believe that. And nobody can deplete my faith in that line of thinking. Nobody can. Undergone too many times. Well, I shouldn't have been able to do things. And the conditions totally changed. Because of most I. So do that yourselves. Because it will seem like there are too many situations that will cause you to just fold, right? Don't fold. So you can be a witness to how your father delivers. Be genuine about it. Just be genuine. You don't have to go into doing something and say, well, I know God will heal me and this, that, and the other. No, don't have that mindset. Just have a mindset of servitude. That's all. Not some bold mindset that God will fix everything, right? No, just go forward in truth and in love for him and watch what he does. Be a witness to what he does because the more you're a witness to his deliverance, the less you're going to be shaken in times to come. You won't be shaken in times to come. Someone said, Michael, do you think they're going to crash financial system this weekend? No, I do not. No, I don't. I don't think so. The reason why I don't think so is because, well, there are several reasons why I don't think so. So let's, let's, let's look at it real quick. I'm going to give you guys some mindset. It's something I've noticed over time. Since I was small, a little fella, things have happened to the financial system. And the very things that didn't happen, right, when they did, they were inconvenient for just about everybody. Not just a, you know, not just a few. The Great Depression, for example. There were quite a few people of power. They didn't make it through the Great Depression. They didn't. It was something that, uh, it was almost like they couldn't control it, right? Any type of financial crash is going to be caused by the people. 
the stock markets, right? That's ran by faith. And what I mean by that, that's if people believe things are going to be better, they start, you know, put money in stocks and the economy goes up, right? If people think that uh, things are going to get bad, they pull their money out, stocks plummet. So it's a faith-based system. Stocks and bonds, ultimately, they back the power, right? They show a snapshot of the power of a nation, so on and so forth. But the people control that. So whatever you think, the investor, whatever you think, um, that's what's going to happen. You guys are aware of that, right? You are aware of that. That when you think some things are going to go sour, you will start pulling your money out of certain places, thus causing a crash. Only when the people believe that all is for nothing will they start taking the money out. And people cause a crash, right? People do that. Remember that. That's why, that's why every single forecast of a financial crash has failed. It failed. It did. It failed. It failed because the people weren't thinking the same way that, uh, you know, the trends were going or, or something like that. Just remember that. You'll see it. The people control it. Cryptocurrency is the same thing. If people, uh, if they get scared enough, they'll start pulling their money out of cryptocurrency and that's when it falters. That's when it goes down. It'll go right back up again. Right? It does. People do that. And it's important that people do that because they gauge how the people believe in things based on it. You, you guys would be surprised how these people operate. They, they, just like we operate by faith, they operate by luck and fortune. And let me explain that. If, for example, say a person was fortunate enough to make, you know, five decisions that led them to wealth, right? Now, these people in the system are going to look at you like somehow you have favor with the God of the earth. This is how they look at you. And they will utilize you to get favor themselves from the God of this earth because ultimately they want favor from the God of this earth. They do. They do. They use you as a guinea pig to determine if, you know, it, it, where that favor is. That's why you can see a star, you know, that propped up one year. The next year, they totally go downhill. And then you start looking into that uh, music artist or whoever it is. And there was a series of unfortunate things that took place that nobody caused. It was just one of those happenstance things. And when that happens, everybody backs away from you because they think you're out of favor with the God of this world. And that's how they are. And that's it. That's why they seem to worship each other so much. Because they want favor with the God of this earth. They're also primarily concerned about saving their own flesh. There we are. That's why I don't believe any financial collapse is going to happen this weekend. I don't believe that. You will know because people, the people of this um, of the USA will begin to get a bit uh a bit nervous about finances when that happens. You're going to hear that outright. And that's when you start making your decisions. It'll be like um, dominoes fall. And you'll see it. You'll see it. Because many people will have the idea, well, something is not right. I better get my money out of the bank or I better get my money out of this stock or that stock. And every single time that happens, that's when things fall. Right? If that doesn't happen, nothing falters. Now you understand. And listen, believe it or not, understanding that system is everything, right? That puts you ahead of the curve. So you're not guessing. You, you will then know how that mechanism works. You'll know that. Hmm? Okay. California, how many of you guys live in California? How many folks are in California? California has a problem. You guys aware of that? They have a problem. They're getting far too much uh, moisture. I know what they say the causes are. It doesn't matter what they name it. What matters is that you have atmospheric conditions that are persistent and they're forming. These large USA-wide storms are, um, that, that's, uh, and they're just beginning. They, they really have no strength. You know, we're in the colder months. In the colder months, storms have no power whatsoever. So just think about that. Think about the severity and the strength of these storms during the winter months when storms have absolutely no energy. What's going to happen when everything warms up? 
I want you guys to be aware of that because warmth brings energy. Warmth does not cold. When it's cold, you're seeing, uh, you know, minimal effects. Can you imagine what's going to happen this summer? If they had tornadoes and they did in the wintertime, thunderstorms in the wintertime, thunder, snow, everything else, high winds, you just name it. It was like all seasons wrapped up into one. If all that happened in the wintertime, what do you think is going to happen when the energy hits these uh, systems and these these big cumulonimbus cells begin to form? What then? Think of the rain totals, you know, seven and a half inches, 13 inches rain total in a time where energy is at its minimal. The, the winter times. What's going to happen when it, when it warms up everywhere? If they normally, normally the rule of thumb is if you have, say, for example, you had five inches of rain in the winter at any given location within the USA, then in the summertime, you're going to have twice that amount, if not three times that amount in the summertime. Because for the most part, during the winters when they were normal, you, you may have had an inch and a half of rain or two inches of rain, right? This time we've had, what, seven inches, 13 inches? Can you imagine what's going to happen during the summer times when, when the energy is, is really uh, available for these storms? Weather will become a direct enemy of mankind, right? It will. And it's so funny because somebody, I, I guess when you have storms like that, people say harp. Why in the world would harp destroy its own facilities? Do you guys know a, a snowstorm just destroyed one of those uh, harp antenna arrays? So terrible. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to go over that, guys, because you got people in COT who work at those facilities. They know exactly what harp is and what it's not. And it's good that people not be fooled as to what exists, what capabilities uh, people have, and so on and so forth. Harm doesn't work too well. It doesn't work too well at all. There is another system that has nothing to do with harm that nobody talks about. That's the system you need to think about. And we're going to go over that system. That system is uh, that's a legitimate system. Weather control and weather controlling techniques started World War II. That's when they started World War II. To give cloud cover, for example, to ships and things of that nature. Harp was utilized to do that. That's when it was used. Most people don't really understand that. Guys, I got some air on. It is. Whew. Mike's the ice shelf in Antarctica. Yes, parts of it have broken off, actually. There are um, parts that have broken off already. They pulled back some of the, uh, some of the uh, underwater stations that were down there monitoring the melt of the ice because the waters are far too warm. This summer, I suspect they're going to have to pull everything back this summer. And if it does break off, it's going to displace water levels a big time, big time. And when that happens, you're going to have a water rise without tsunamis or anything else. You're just simply going to have a water rise on every single coastline. We will have a water event. Nothing's going to stop. I have a firm belief in that. I can see it slowly but surely working its way up to that. We talked about a water event back in uh, 2007 before most of this, most of this stuff was happening and it was hard to believe at that time, but you're starting to see it more and more. It will take place in all coastal cities. We're going to be in trouble because of that. That will also cause a weight displacement event, which means magma is going to be squeezed to come out of areas that normally wouldn't erupt a displacement of water. What follows that are multiple volcanic uh, events opening. So you can look for that too. We'll undergo that too. This summer is going to be one of those telltale years, guys. If we survive this summer, right? if we survive this summer, if the flood events and the uh, clay rain, I'm going to call it clay rain, if we can survive all of that in the fall, and the chemical detections will take place on the East Coast and some of the uh, precautions that will take place on the West Coast, right? If we survive all of that, then we can expect drastic changes uh, in the weather come this winter coming up. Drastic. And, and that will coincide with bad issues in the heavens, right? To my understanding, we have some intersections taking place in the heavens this year. 2024. 
And the closer we get to those, of course, more information people are going to have. But coordinates will be, they should be high confidence in April. In April, there should be a high confidence in coordinates, which means a person with a telescope should be able to take that telescope and begin to see things based off coordinates, right? Things don't matter. Other things that move in the heavens, they should be able to see something brand new. So the higher the confidence in those coordinates, the closer we get to that time, the more, you know, you guys will have a chance to observe it yourselves. Make sure you don't, you know, make up some narrative when you do see it. Because those are going to be, that's going to be a very different time. Always expect people to embellish what it really is. And, and that's unfortunate because that normally happens, right? You have people out there that have very convincing speech. And if you listen to them, uh, to what they say, you'll believe every word that comes out of their mouth because it will sound plausible. But it may not be true. I would encourage everybody to, as you get information, take your time. Certainly do pray about it. And let the Lord guide you into truth. Let him guide you. Science is not going to work out too well. People are going to see an evil constellation. That's what I keep calling it. Which means a constellation that has long been gone. It's coming back again. And it only comes back during the times of decimations of the earth. Like a cosmic calendar. So, when that happens, most are going to be not going to have an answer for that. They're going to come up with one quick, but they won't have an answer for that from the onset. Keep that in mind. Okay, somebody had a question in here before I go over something else. Let's see what you guys have any questions on what we've talked about so far. I hope that you guys who have old routers, you're going to have to deal with them. Please deal with them. Somebody said, what's going to happen April 8th? I have no idea. I will post dates in certain areas of the website as, um, as I feel them strongly enough. Right. Normally when I post dates, guys, I have to be very, I just don't operate on a whim, which is why those dates always, they always intersect with, with, um, happens. Right. And I didn't post any after, after a few events because people were starting to write in emails of the wrong type. Right. You get a date, you get three or four dates, right. Right. And then people start writing in, uh, wanting you to speak something over them or something like that. That's not what I put those dates up there for. That's not to edify me or anybody else. That's so that people can be informed of, of things in the heavens, not to do that flesh worship thing. And so I, I didn't put any up there. Hopefully people would say, well, there are no dates, you know, it's just like everybody else. That's right. It's what you need to think because any days that go in there are not for popularity, right? That's information. Uh, when things happen on those dates, it's information in the hopes that you guys will see that it's just not hogwash there. There's an impossible subject we have to discuss that you guys will not believe right now if I began to discuss them. You have to have demonstration before you can actually start believing. Them. And there we are. Very difficult to believe. This is one of the 12 things that have started that starts with pre. The what? 12 things that started that started with pre. What about April 13th? That's too far off. I don't go into dates past. Uh, guys, I live in the right now. Right now. Have you noticed that? I live in the right now. Chances are, I can't even think about April 13th, 2020. That's too far out there. I'm not. That's. That's a non-issue to me. That's too far out there. People will be affected by things that happen, you know, a couple days versus that date. So, yeah, well, they had some preamps last night. You guys know about the missile attacks last night, right? You guys know about that? Maybe not. It's going to continue to go forward. It's going to continue to happen. As the United States is destroying they're the ones that are doing the preempts. And they started taking place last night. That's why I kind of threw that out there a few days ago and just left it alone. News media, they were going to cover it anyway. Maybe not everywhere, but they did cover it. There's a war beginning. 
there is a war beginning. And it's about to get a whole lot worse. It really is. That pre was a preempt, a preemptive strike, to be exact. And those preemptive strikes, more than one, took place yesterday. They're going to be taking place tonight. They're going to take place Sunday. They're going to take place Tuesday. And they're going to get, uh, they're going to start consuming areas. Things are not as controlled as you would think. They're not. Traders are everywhere. Because people are greedy and they like money, a lot of people can be bought. Somebody said, why did they tell, why did the U.S. tell them exactly when we were going to attack? Well, they did to a degree, but in other degrees, they did not. They always do that when they have operatives in that area. You cannot make contact with an operative. He can't do that. And whenever that operative knows, he's going to have to know through media. So when they make a blatant comment like that, right, it seems like they're warning everybody there to go take off. They're talking to those operatives. And that's what they're doing. So that the operatives are out of there. They do that with commercials also. You know, when you see some of these commercials that pop up and you never see them again, same thing happens. They never make contact with operatives out there. Kind of like the Mossad. You guys know about the Mossad, right? A Mossad operative, for example, say they say, say they are Iranian. They live in Iran and they are an Iranian and they have Iranian families out there, right? Now, it's still a Mossad operation. They just use Iran uh, and their citizenship in Iran to report back to Israel. They never have contact directly with Israel. And nobody from Israel can ever contact them either. So they operate nations like that in the USA, in all nations. And they contact them through media. People are, civilians are sometimes gullible. Um, because their civilians will always think of their own narrative to things. And they count on that to communicate with uh, operatives. They do. Some people figure that out sometimes, but that's how they communicate. That's how they communicate. What was that? Uh, I was going to share something with you guys, but I have to do that in a minute, an hour. There's been a few movies that have repetitive dates in them, right? Those movies mark the date of the current conflict that's happening in the Middle East right now. Perfectly. And that's, uh, you know, that's beyond happenstance. But that's what they do. Somebody says, will there be martial law soon? I don't think so. I think that what we're about to face is going to be far different. They've muddied up the waters with martial law. Who would the military put under martial law? That will cause a premature breakaway of a lot of citizens of the USA. When somebody says, what? Waters are coming for Arizona. Floods and bugs. More bugs. Do you guys know a bug army is an army that nobody can defeat? Are you guys aware of that? Do you realize with these hotter temperatures that bugs are going to begin to surface? That we can't combat bugs, can we? Remember this statement. God will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He'll do it every time. Something, you know, it's one thing to prepare for an army who's advanced and they have similar weaponry than you do, but who could fight a spider assault? Who could fight a flea assault? Who could fight a plague of flies? Who could do that? Wouldn't that be awful? Think about that. <laughs> that would be absolutely awful. Right. Somebody say, can martial law stop the election? Not necessarily martial law. Whatever, whatever institutes martial law, whatever reason uh, demands that, that could be the reason to stall elections. Right. It could be. But we would have to be in an international fight. We would. We would. But in truth, I wouldn't worry about martial law just yet. Not yet. I would worry about how you guys can be used from the enemy. I would worry about that. 
Be careful not to let anybody make you form an opinion about somebody else. Be careful of that. Someone said, our huge cockroach is coming from the sewers in Arizona again. Yeah, they sound like uh, helicopters when they fly by, don't they? I believe they have in Arizona and Texas and uh, New Mexico and places like that. Bad cockroaches. They tore a tree down one time in Fort Hood, Texas, and it was full of giant cockroaches. I mean, it was full of giant cockroaches. That was an awful experience. It was. They ended end up dropping aerosols by helicopters uh, all over the area. Those things were huge. Those things were huge. But, you know, we'll face more and more things like that because most of your heat, your, your warmer climates are being driven northerly, you know, to the north. That's going to bring a whole host of bugs. A whole new host. So, hope you guys are ready for that. Hope you're ready. Bobby, you guys, so you're going to have this election year. You're going to make a break. It's going to make a break how things operate from that time forward. And somebody said, why did Trump say it will be over by the end of February? Well, hear me out on this, folks. Yeah. I want you guys to put on your thinking caps. What is President Trump? What is what is Donald Trump? Is he a man or is he a deity? Which one? Which one is he? He's a man, right? Many men make comments a lot. Okay. Before the before Joe Biden was elected, President Trump made comments. They did not come to pass. They're just comments, right? Trump is a off the hip type person anyway. And he just made a comment. It does he's he's not making divine comments. You gotta be people have to be careful not to prop men up in positions of divinity. They they gotta not do that. A lot of people propped Trump up in a place of worship. They gotta be careful not to do that. Right? They may like him, yes, he may speak for them, yes, but they cannot worship him. You know what the father will do to a person who's worshipped in this land? The father will remove that person. The father will. He will remove that person. You know how I know that? Because he's done that historically. When people start to worship men, God removes that person that was worshipped. So when it comes to statements being made, there were other statements were made. Other statements that... Uh, you know, nothing came to pass. And people make statements. You know, people have suggestive ideas. So see them as such. Okay. See them as such. Now, if a person is an ambassador to Christ, if a person is that, and that person is, 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 is devout towards Christ, then hear that person in that capacity. Don't worship him either, but hear that person that capacity. When a person is of the world, and they seek to establish things in the world, right? then hear them as such for doing things in the world. But, but make a distinction between divinity and humanity. Never put those two together. Because if you, if you respect Trump, then you will not deify him. You know what will happen to any deified person from the most time? If the populace deifies him, his in position is not going to be so good. Okay? Be an advocate for people like that. Cover them with prayers, but don't worship them. Don't do that. Somebody says, Mike, do you believe God is using Trump? I believe God uses everybody that is popular. That's what I believe. He's not just it. He's using Biden, too. That's very clear. He's using Trump, Biden. He's using just about anything that will capture because it deals with you. And he already promised that if it deals with you, he's going to be involved with it. Right? Do I respect one over the other? Listen, I'm spoiled to a degree because I know certain things from behind the curtain. Okay. I don't, nobody has to be presented to me for me to know them. I know them in different lights. I don't, I never share that with people. That's, that's for me. That's mine. 
and I pray for people all the time. But I don't think of one over the other either. I don't do that. I don't. See, the Lord told us something. Let me tell you what the Lord said. You know what happens when the Lord is with someone? What did he say? What did the Lord say when the Lord is with someone? What did he say? What did he say would happen? He said that everything they would touch would be a blessing. That's what the Lord said. Do you guys hear me? When the Lord is truly with someone, everything they touch will be a blessing. Now, you can't say that of these men out there, can you? And God can use them, but they're not holy men. You, that, that's not what they are. Of course, God is going to use them because you're involved. But when God blesses a person, everything they touch is blessed, not cursed, not cursed. And when somebody is blessed like that, foul stuff doesn't come out of their mouths. Right? These are just men. These are just men. I don't care who it is. What a person has guile in their mouth, God has already told us that they're just men. Pray for them. Pray for them. Don't worship them. Never do that. There are far too many people looking for someone to follow. Follow Christ. Don't follow men because you do yourself a disservice by doing so. Not to mention, you're the ones that make the change, not them. Not them. And you guys know presidents do not run the show. I hope you guys. When Trump was in office, why did he not build the wall? Somebody answer that. Why couldn't he build the wall? Why? We know he wanted to build the wall. Why couldn't he do it? Why couldn't he build the wall? Because he only has executive authority. And executive authority is not the authority. See, a president can, can pass executive orders. Executive orders have minimal impact upon the people. Congressional papers have long-standing impacts upon the people. It is congressional authority you ought to be looking at, that you ought to demand things out of, not the president. The president is just an elected spokesperson. He speaks for a congressional chunk is what he does. But executive authority can only do certain things. It's just like war. A president can send the Marines to do something, but they cannot send the army. Did you know that? It takes congressional approval to send the army. They can send the Marines. And even that is limited in scope, but they can send the Marines. Marines are far tinier than that of the army. In other words, Congress, those people in Congress, they've been skating through everything, having you look at the presidents. And nothing changes. When Trump got into office, I looked at a list of what he was able to accomplish and what he was not able to accomplish. Same thing with Bill Clinton. Same thing with, with uh, Obama. It's the exact same thing. They're on, they were only able to change things based on executive order. They tried to talk people into you know, doing specific things, and it did not work because they only have executive authority. Congress was unwilling to grant certain things, right? Unwilling. And that's how everything is set up, and a lot of people don't know that. There's no way in the world a president is going to be a dictator. No way in the world. Not with Congress in power unless somebody comes up with a way to suspend the powers of Congress and take that power onto themselves if that ever happens. Whoever does that is a very bad person. Not a good person. Not a good person. Somebody said, but my Congress is controlled by big tech. Well, they have influences, yes. They have their intertwinings, but nevertheless, that's the way it is. Presidents have no sway or influence on that. Presidents just make speeches and make people believe in certain things that are typed out for them. Think about it. Look at what's been happening all this time. And it's so sad because they have people believing that presidents can do this and can do that. But all they have to do is look at the track record of what's actually been done, and they find out presidents have not done too much. But Congress has done everything. Congress has warped just about everything. That's why you have those who are fighting in Congress against congressional members. It's very difficult for them to get support. Very difficult. 
You have to see it for what it is. See things for what they are. Well, did you guys read the executive order of Biden? Did you read that executive order versus the congressional decision? See, you have to, you have to extract that, pull that. We could do that. And then you would see the whole thing. I encourage you to do that yourselves. Sometimes a person that can say something and even pass an executive order that does absolutely nothing. Do you know that? Now, there's no executive order that can override congressional powers, just so you know that. And when you're dealing with foreign states, right? When you're dealing with foreign states, congressional power is going to be the standing authority, not the president's power. His is just an opinion that can sway, you know, that can sway people's ideas and things, right? Watch what the outcome is. That's what you have to see. I do that a lot. I'll always see what they write, but I see what the outcome is. Whatever the outcome is, is true. Whatever was talked about that never takes place was the lie. The end result is the truth. And so all you have to do is look at the end result. See, because if you're not careful, you'll think that the conversation is the truth and you'll ignore the end result. The end result is the truth. Do you hear me, guys? The end result is the truth. And that's how you weigh things. Politicians talk a lot. They lie a lot, too. Not one of them is honest. They're not. So you have to look at the end result. Just like the Lord said, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Never once did Jesus ever say, you'll know a tree by the tree. No, he said by the fruit. So you have to look at the out, the fruit of that tree, what that tree yields. You'll have to look at the fruit to understand what the tree is. In this case, look at the end result. Look at the end result. That way you're not fooled. You're not fooled. There are a lot of people out there right now that are angry over nothing. And nothing has come to fruition. Nothing. Haven't you noticed that? How many people have noticed that what most people were worried about never came to fruition? But you know what did come to fruition? What the people never talked about. Like same-sex marriage. Right? Things like that. They came about. They were passed because nobody was talking about them. They got everybody's eyeballs on everything else. While, while Congress started to pass all these different uh, societal changing laws, right? So essentially the people focused on what would never take place while Congress was passing long-standing laws that would affect everybody. You have to look at the outcome. Don't look, don't, don't, don't get captured by the rhetoric. Don't do that. Because a lot of people get, they get captured by the rhetoric and they get upset for nothing. You have to see it by the fruit it bears. And you're going to notice something too. When you see the fruit that is there or is not there, that's how you know what the tree is. You're not going to know it any other way. You won't know it any other way. Somebody says, more and more facing adversity and suffering. How can we assist those in tough spots when the scripture seeing I'm far off to them. When somebody feels they're in a spiritual desert, who do you think put them in that desert? The Lord does that. Here's what you have to do. You have to look back in your own life, right? There were times in your own life when you thought that, uh, that God didn't quite favor you, right? They could have lasted for years, but he took you through a process. He didn't allow anybody to intercede in that process. He did not. He took you through a process, and the end result is your faith cannot be broken. That's what happens. And he knows exactly what he's doing. It Listen, adversity is required for change. Adversity is required. We are the ones that reject too much truth. We do. We do that. And we're stubborn. We stick to our ways and our way of thinking more than anything else until the Lord puts us in that desert, in that place, right? Now, one thing about the Lord is this, and I give you a warning in this too. He will direct those by way of prayer and other things to folks before anything ever takes place. But let me give you a warning. If we put our little fingers into a situation that God, when God is working on a person and we try to get in the way, thinking that we're doing a good thing, he will tie our hands up. Do you hear me? You don't want yourselves to be in that position. 
For example, if the Lord is working with somebody and he's going to discipline them, because if he doesn't, their soul is going to be totally consumed. If anybody tries to interfere with that, he's going to tie their hands. Do you hear me? And when your hands are tied, that means you're not able to do anything. That means some situation is going to jump on you so much so you won't have time to think about anybody else. He will tie your hands up in a situation. When God takes a person through a process, right? And we think somehow that our thoughts and our, we see the truth of somebody else's situations. He will tie our hands up. He will tie them. Do you know how many times I've been through that? Because you can care about people, right? You don't care what the issue is. You just want to help. If he ties your hands, you're not going to be able to do anything. God is in the, listen, he delivers souls. And what he takes us through is important. And many of us have to be broken. Because if God didn't break us, we'd be just as stubborn, stuck in our ways. Right? Does it look good all the time when God is working with a person? No, it doesn't. But he knows exactly what he's doing. He does. But nothing is stopping us from praying. Nothing is stopping us from seeking guidance. It's nothing is stopping us from. But the Lord will certainly tie your hands up when he's working with somebody. He will not accept your two sins. He won't, he just won't do it. So remember that. Remember that. I, I, for one, am very fearful. When people go through things, I will seek him always. Because I have to know, if there, is this, you know, just one of those things I'm supposed to pray for? Because I always ask this question, why am I noticing this? It's not an accident that you notice things. Everybody does not notice it. Only some people do. And when you notice something, what does the Lord require of you in that situation? That's what you're seeking for. If he allows you to notice something, he did that on purpose, and you need to find out why. Believe me, it's, it's based in holiness. It's based in holiness. But it, it requires a full surrender to the most high is required. Right? There have been people who have been bailed out, and it killed them. It destroyed them. People will tell you all the time that if they had not gone through such adversity, they would have been a destroyer in many people's lives. God knows what it takes. The Lord knows exactly what it takes to get us to see things, to be delivered. He knows what it takes. The problem is we see somebody suffering and instantly we don't want them to suffer, right? So well, we need to find out if the Lord is working in that situation or not, why he allowed you to notice it, right? And he will let you know. But he'll also, you'll, you'll know if his hand's off or not. You'll know. You will know. There have been, there have been circumstances in my life God didn't allow anybody to intercede in. And if I had not gone through it, I would not have, I wouldn't have any of the faith I have today. I would have been a doomed soul. And the Lord didn't allow anybody to intercede. And I had to go through it. And I'm so thankful for that. That if I could go back in time, I'd go through it again. I would never ask the Lord to, to go another route. I wouldn't do that because it took, it took that situation to open my eyes. And that is priceless to me. Priceless. We just have to be careful. See, sometimes you see a person in trouble and we act like we're God. Well, that person shouldn't be in that predicament. Let me get that person out. No, we're not the living God. We're not God. We're children of the most high, but we're not God. And sometimes we are incredibly arrogant. Are we? Hmm? Thinking that we can decide when enough is enough for somebody else. We can't do that. We can't do that. Somebody said, how can I have a better attitude while working with illegal immigrants at the airport for my job? It makes me so angry. Well, it shouldn't make you angry. I want you to think about something. You ready? You ready? Anybody who gets angry at an illegal immigrant. You ready? Isn't it a wonderful thing that the Lord never announced your sin to the rest of the world? Isn't that awesome? He never, he never announces our sin to the rest of the world. So we're able to have reputations, aren't we? Huh? 
were only able to have reputations at standing because he did not disclose the rottenness we have in our lives, right? So in truth, we have rotten things in our lives that if they were exposed to everybody else, people would look at us with hatred, correct? Especially if you're a sinner saved by grace, right? We have things in our lives we don't want anybody to know about. Isn't that right? So that means in truth, we are in positions. We are in, you know, certain positions and places and this, that, and the other. The only reason we're in those positions it's because nobody knows the extent of our iniquity, correct? Nobody knows our secrets. Isn't that right? How many have secrets that if somebody knew about that you probably wouldn't have the job you have? An illegal immigrant is somebody whose secret is known. See, nobody knows about our secrets. When we find out about somebody else's secret, all of a sudden there's a lot of hatred involved. We forget but if God were to show people our secret, we would be the ones on the run. Wouldn't we? Nobody would want us in their company, would they? But the truth is, he did not tell everybody about your dirty laundry. He didn't. And so you can be in many different positions, all because nobody knows about your dirty laundry. What about your thoughts? If people knew our thoughts, they'd stay far away from us. They would take note of something. Illegal immigration will always be so long as we have people who are dishonest about the borders of this nation and in any nation. That's always going to be constant. It's not going to help the situation by being angry. What you can do, though, because listen, how many people, how many families have come over to the U.S. looking for sanctuary because somebody told them they could find it? So whose fault is it? Think about that. Whose fault is it? You're in a position. You're in a position right now to say a prayer where all those people who could legitimately have been broken, you know? Somebody sent them to that border. You can almost, you better believe that. Somebody sent them to that border. Somebody invited them there. Can you imagine being invited to a country only to be kicked out as soon as you get up to the spot? And you don't know who's who. You don't know who the drug dealer is versus who that innocent person is. You don't know. But you're in a position to speak a godly word over all of them. You are. You are. You're in a good position. So don't spend your time being angry. Start thinking about who sent them there. Don't join the crowd by being angry. Don't do that. That's exactly what Satan wants people to be, is angry. Godliness never comes out of anger. Never. Never. But you better know something. Let me ask you guys something. What nation, what nation is going to be preserved when the Lord comes? I'll give you a quick answer, not one. Every idol of all lands are going to be removed. The Father's coming back with an eviction notice. And everybody's going to find out it was never their land. They were to do the right thing with what they were blessed with. See how arrogant we can become? Right. That we call things ours and they're not ours. Me, personally, I don't worry about such things because anger is not going to stop. Me. I don't waste my time being a certain way that's not going to be part of that solution. Somebody needs to speak to Congress. Somebody needs to demand the Congress. They put a notice out, the truth, to all other nations, that this border, the, the USA border, is not a place you just come up to and fall in the door. Somebody needs to speak up and say, you know, don't come here. Too many people are being turned around. You, you can't come here, period. There are too many families, too many crooks, too many soldiers. Lots of everything is coming across that border every border and we're going to pay a penalty for that too there are too many sleeper cells within the usa even if we turn back everybody right now in my opinion it's too late too much chatter within the usa too many people loyal to foreign entities treason to a high degree is taking place within the usa which means people respect their own countries but do not respect the usa they don't keep looking at everybody else to do it and what have we been doing? 
in all honesty, what have we been doing? We haven't been doing anything. We've been pointing out who's not doing anything, but we're not. Has anybody made a petition? I have. Have you guys written letters to your congressional representation? Yeah. See, I'm convinced that you're you the believer. If you write a letter, the Lord's blessing is going to be on it. You have to write it with the right heart, of course. Me, I'm deeply concerned about people coming here and getting turned around. I am. Somebody should speak up and say, just don't come to the USA. Because you won't be admitted. You're going to give up everything to have nothing. Because somebody is sending those people here. Somebody is telling those people that they can come up to the USA. But that's something we have to do. We have to do that. We can't complain about it and, and uh, you know, put that off on somebody else. We have to do something about that. We do. And Congress has no choice but that act on what the people begin to submit. But the people are not submitting anything. The people are confused about the most simplest of things. Not good, I'll tell you. And some of you know about that. Uh, when I was talking about that border at 5 o'clock in the morning, I told you guys the border would be a problem. It's going to be, be a problem, and all eyes are going to be on the border. Let's just hope uh, a volcano does not go off Mexico. Because if it does, looks like something will begin to happen. Have mercy. Yeah, it's not good, guys. It's not good. You know, a lot of people don't understand that. They don't realize that there are agents out there getting people to come to the USA. They don't really understand that. And somebody has to speak. Somebody does. And that part starts to get to me when Nobody says anything. Nobody will state anything. They won't communicate the truth to people. They don't want the problem solved, or they would have solved it. Why do we still have that problem in the first place? You mean to tell me nobody has been able to solve that problem of the border? Is that what you're telling? Nobody has been able to solve it. Unless it's Mike Wine. Look at what's in this nation. Something that's going to have to be put out of this nation. A deity is in this nation. Satan is the author of confusion, is he not? Where confusion is, Satan is there also. The border is a very confusing subject, isn't it? Satan is right in the midst of it. There's no clarity at the border. No clarity. And in the USA, Apollyon, Apollyon is worship. Do you guys know that? Apollyon. The actual Apollyon is worshipped here in America. The real Apollyon. He is worshipped right here in this place. Folks, I'll be back in a few minutes right here at CFT. I'll be back in just a few minutes. I guess I will talk about something I don't want to talk about, but I'll go ahead and talk. I'll be right back. Soon. Okay, everybody. I'm back again. Guys, one more statement on this uh anger issue thing make sure you sow seeds of mercy you don't need them you don't need them things are not exactly going right here in this country right sow seeds of mercy so you can reap seeds of mercy be sincere behind everything you do doesn't matter what side you're on right just be sincere and Go forward with what the Lord instructs you to go forward with. It's needed. I think for a long time, Christians have been idle a long time. Not really, not really acting, right? Just sitting back and seeing what happens. That doesn't work out too, uh, too good. Too good. Anyway, because one day this nation... We have been blessed for long in this nation. The lands of this nation are going to be pitted with foreign explosions. The very things that have happened in other nations will happen here. It'll happen here. And I pray that you guys are ready for that. You never have to fear that. Because I'm a one, you don't know when that will take place. You don't know if you're going to be here or not. 
right? But in everything that you do, be, be very sincere. Very sincere, not reactive. Not reactive, sincere. Dare to be different too. Dare not to follow the crowd, but be who the Lord has put on this earth in you. You don't have to be like everybody else. Be yourselves 100%. Make a difference. Make a difference. The world is quite reactive, aren't they? And they get nothing done. Nothing happens. We need not be the same way. Okay. Anybody got any more questions? I'm going to take a break here in a minute. Mark, would you ever pick up arms to protect others? Unfortunately, I would. And I've done so many times before. But I want you, I want you to know something. Pick up arms right, to take a life. No, not that. But I would pick up arms to discourage an evil aggression. I would. I most certainly would. Without hesitation. And I believe the Lord knows and that's a weakness. Part of that is a weakness because the Lord knows exactly what I'll do. He does. But he's not going to put us in certain positions. That's why I don't live a hypothetical life. I won't do that. He knows if I'm put in that position, exactly what I'll do. He knows. But I ask you something. Why would the Lord put any of us in a position where we would have to commit something we don't want to commit? I don't want to take a lie. I don't want to do that. I've done that before. I don't want to do that. And the Lord, he has not put me in that position in a long time. Very long time. But I can never brag about being who has not done it. I can't do that. Positions of compromise. Your father will keep you from those positions. That's a fact. That's a fact. When your heart is totally towards him, he'll never put you in a position of compromise. He's not going to do that. You can have a what-if scenario all the days of your life. But he's not going to put you in a position of uh, something you can't overcome, right? I do have weaknesses. I do. <laughs> I, I call them weaknesses. But the Lord's not going to put me in that predicament. He won't. Somebody said, what now? There you go, forever in Christ. And that's it right there. If you, if you, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you something. You will attract your situation to yourselves. I hope you understand that. Sometimes we attract things to ourselves. We do. We do. But that's why we pray to it. We ask the Lord to cover us. Right? We admit to the Lord our areas of shortcomings. We do. And we trust in him to keep us from those areas. I said, what is the true reason the government has allowed this border to remain open? Dangerous. Like, well, because you have people within. You have people within the nation, right? First of all, first of all, people have changed over the last 10 years, 10, 15, 20 years. People are not the same anymore. There's a, there's a dark rising taking place right now. All those people who were not covered by the blood of the lamb, they're agents of Satan. There is no... There's nobody idle. You're either washed by the blood of the Lamb, or you're one of Satan's cronies, period. To have an open border is to have a problem which justifies members and, and procedures and certain laws and things in Congress. So they make themselves relevant with the problems that we have. If we solved all the problems, people would say, well, what do we need that for? And what do we need that for? And it would draw down government. Right? It would draw down government big time. So what they do is they create these issues and problems to justify themselves. Who in Congress right now, right, is living off the salary they're paid? Nobody I know of. They don't make that much money in Congress, do they? So why do they have million dollar homes? Why would congressional members have jets? Why would they go to a dinner that's fifteen hundred dollars a head? just to talk about foolish things. Why would they do that? Because they have made themselves relevant. They sit themselves in this king's position. They do. And they're not going to give that up. Right? 
They love wealth. They love power. They love to call the shots and they like their drinks. They do. Mess of life they love. They, they're not going to give that up for anything. They will act, say, or do anything so they can keep that power. They will. And they have done quite a bit. So that problem at the border, though it could be solved, right? they could have built a wall by now, but they will not. Why won't they? Because it will make them irrelevant, right? Make them irrelevant. So that's where we are. That's where we are. And that evil element within this nation grows and spreads. You're the righteous of the land, not them. You are. One of the biggest problems is that many of you have been looking to them to do the right thing. Who among you would look at Satan and hope that he does the right thing? Huh? Would you actually look at Satan and say, I hope Satan does the right thing this time? No, you wouldn't, right? So why would you look at people who love their prestige, who love their power, dominion, right? Why would you look at people like that as though somehow they're going to all of a sudden do the right thing? They made their choice. They're holding on to power. They're holding on to riches. They do not want to be one of the poor. They don't want to be a statistics. They don't. Their salary by no means justifies how they live. It doesn't. They don't like, uh, they don't deal in impoverished things. They believe that they are worth a lot. They do. This is just how they are. So it's not like the governments we used to have. The government that was here many, 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 many years ago, they were of the people. Actually, it's fascinating reading about them because they took, they took a very tiny salary, a salary that hardly support anything. They did everything with it. They were truly interested in this nation. They didn't care about how much they made. But nowadays, they do something called lobbying, right? If you pass a law, a corporation comes up and says, hey, why don't you add this to that law so that when this law is passed, we will have, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dominate the market here in this area. And we'll, if we dominate the market, of course, we're going to take care of you. So we'll give you millions behind this bill. So now you have these congressional members who support bills based on lobbyists, right? They make money off these corporations. In essence, what you have are corporations paying congressional members. They're paying them, right, uh, to, to pass certain laws. That's what you have. And it's legal. Lobbyists are everywhere. It's legal. Well, that's the very thing that uh, George Washington warned about. He did. He warned about that. Because now we live in a corp, believe it or not, the corporations run this nation, not the government. The government, be, they've been given charge to pass laws. So who controls those government people? Corporations do. And they have laws passed for their own convenience. They do. Which is why you're going to see a bunch of laws passed concerning AI and technology. So that these corporations can go unimpeded into areas that they previously could not. They're not doing it for your welfare either. People love their power. They love their power. They want power is what they want. And they're going to keep that power, right? Because they know what it is to have power and lose it. They don't want to lose it. They don't want to. So a lot of those folks have sold out. To me, it doesn't matter who says they're nicer. A lot of people say certain members are God-fearing. I've heard some people who appear to be God-fearing, but behind closed doors, you'd be hard-pressed to believe that. They do egregious things in regards to morality. Things you wouldn't have. You would certainly not approve of. But as I said before, they'll do anything in the public's eye to keep their positions. They will. They were already sold out. They've taken the way of Cain, right? They progress by killing their own competition. They do. That's the way of Cain. That was a way warned me. That was a warning to us never to take that way. Don't take the way that kills your brother just so you can advance. They do it all the time. And they say that's business. That's how they work. When you understand that, then you can start to see what's happening in this nation. 
That's when you start praying for. You do. Especially for the innocent people who undergo some of these uh, procedures that they have put in place. Somebody says, makes me so ashamed of America. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not ashamed of America. And because America is you. That's the government. You are America. You are. See, I see America different. America is the people in America. That's what America is. Now you have those who are in government who seek to use elements of America to perpetuate themselves. That shame. America within, within itself is an idea. An idea that all men can be free. That idea is not dead. And for the most part, it, it is... Uh, it works, especially with you guys who belong to Christ. You're the ones that have the power to bring that message and authority of the kingdom everywhere that you go. But if you don't go anywhere, if you don't make a difference, then America is going to fall prey to what's already in power, right? Or should I say flesh power? You are this nation. You are. You are. Not them. You. You are. And we're just getting to a time where we can't, we can no longer expect them to do the right thing. Correct? Can't expect them. But is this why does the homepage have November 2024? Well, I think it just has, should just have uh, 2024 up there. I know where the November came from. They say, you mean at the very bottom? No. Should just have 2024 up there. That I know that the artwork is changing again. I'll admit, put a lot of symbols in that artwork on the uh, graphic there. It's going to change again. It changes about once per month. Very subtle changes. And it's time for another horse. It is. Sometimes you feel strong about things that the Lord gives you. You do. You really do. Folks. And I'll tell you something, with the changes taking place in this nation, dare to be exactly who the Lord sent you here to be, please. Be exactly who the Lord sent you here to be. The KD Falls November 2024 is going to be a very uh, revealing time. The KD Falls homepage, yeah, that's going to be November 2024. That's up and coming. It's going to be a very revealing time. There'll be no mysteries during that moment. All right, folks, look, I'm going to take a break. And um, I don't know, you know how sometimes when you're not feeling too good, all of a sudden at the midnight hour, you're feeling fine again. So that may happen. Yeah, I may come back with that. There's still some more subjects I want to cover. And yes, I was uh, totally messed up at the beginning of this broadcast, but uh, somehow, somehow, somehow made it through. Don't let war scare you. Don't let war scare you. Right? Don't let war scare you. And remember, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Somebody said a bat. You were going to tell us, Chris Mark, about something. Well, that he's here in America. A bat is worshipped to Polyon. Bad. He is worshipped here in America. He's right here in America in front of everybody. And he's worshipped. He's worshipped here in America. He's right here. His name is even inscribed where he sits, but he's right here. And that's Apollyon. And it's funny how Sheba, which is at CERN, and you have Apollyon or Baden, uh, that character here in America. You also have the dragon, which is uh, same dimensions and everything, which is in yet another country. And all of them. All of them share something very unique in relation to where they are. Those are not accidental structures. They're not. They're not accidental structures. Polyon wore Roman skirt. It's kind of like the Statue of Liberty. How many of you have ever heard what's inside of the Statue of Liberty? If you mention the Statue of Liberty, right, you start talking about it in a different way, people get upset. Do you know the actual figurine that the Statue of Liberty represents? Do you guys know what it represents? Boy, oh boy. 
Don't worry, it's in a that's in a KD file. I believe it's in one of those files where you have the iconography of nations, and I believe that's listed and its history is listed to what it really is. The Statue of Liberty has two others that look just like it in the world right now, today, right now. And you have enthusiastic people that desire it to be, you know, wholesome and, and this and the but Satan is very sneaky. He loves to use uh, statues and things like that to usurp people. You think it's one thing, in fact, it's something very different, very different. And um, yeah, in this case, it is something that's not good at all. It's not good at all. But you'd have to see the layout of it, uh, what it was meant to do. There's a prophecy behind it, too. There's a prophecy behind it. And whatever water it sat on would be water, would be, uh, that water would change, right? That water would be altered. All of which is true here in America. But that's another subject altogether. So certain things look one way, right? And people have accepted them to be specific things, but inscribed on them is something totally different. Something totally different. That means all things are not as what they seem to be. Satan has been trying for many, many years to get people to absolutely corrupt themselves. And he does it in a very specific way. Because you guys have good hearts and you're patriotic. So, of course, he's going to use that to distort things. He's going to use patriotism to defile things. He does it every single time. He has a pretty good track record. I'm doing that. That's why my loyalty is with Christ. Other things may complement that loyalty, but my loyalty is with Christ. My loyalty is not with anything else, but with Christ. And with that one, I'm going to say God bless you guys. I wish I had a little more energy, right? I do. But I may see you guys again. I may see you tomorrow, actually. We'll see. We'll see. I'll give you an update, though. I will. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at the Council of Time. I'll be fine. I will. I'll be fine. My hope is that you guys will be aware, prayerful, looking out for one another, and not falling, right, for the okie doke falling for tricks and scams and all this, that, and the other. That seems to be running rampant in this nation of ours. In Germany, you're not too far behind us. France, you're right there at the door. So it's, it, there's this same darkness spreading all over the place. It is. But remember, you're in this time for a reason. You are. You are. To undo the works of Satan himself. You've been empowered to do that. So God bless you guys. And I will see you next time right here at CUT.